Welcome to rebuilding a vintage open steam launch part 22, fitting the steam engine, fitting the boiler mounting and the crankshaft driven water pump. Currently I'm unfitting the engine, it's a little bit like unpainting but using a screwdriver. If you've been watching this series from the beginning, you will know why the engine is mounted to these two rough pieces of wood. And if you haven't been watching the series from the beginning, maybe you should. And if you are contemplating watching the series from the beginning, I have a favour to ask. Could you occasionally click on the adverts that pop up and let them run full length? That way, I get a very small amount of money. Not quite enough, unfortunately, to order my Ferrari just yet. It is the 5th of January 2017, and my YouTube channel is on its way to the 8 million views mark, and I have almost 19,000 subscribers to the channel. And this is video number 773. I can't believe there are so many. But I do enjoy making the videos and I will continue to do so. While I've been talking, you will notice that the engine has gone. And it's going back in the boat. What I'm doing first though is like a mock-up. Just to make sure things fit and that it's going to be mechanically successful. Fitted between the engine and the propeller shaft is a flexible coupling. So I'm going to reuse this as there's nothing wrong with it. So if it's not broken, I don't fix it. The only thing I don't like is that at one end, someone has drilled and tapped it to take a grub screw, which nips onto the main screw thread of the prop shaft. I personally do not like the idea of a grub screw biting against the thread of a major component like the propeller shaft. So I'm going to alter this. I'm going to take this grub screw out and use a lock nut. Pretty much like the one at the flywheel end. In this clip I'm just checking that there is room for a lock nut at the propeller shaft end. And the good news is yes there's plenty of room. As I move the engine towards the bow of the boat, it is now perfectly aligned with the original mounting holes in the hull. When I looked at the thread on the 3 16 diameter propeller shaft, I automatically presumed it to be 2BA, but it's not. I tried all sorts of different combinations of imperial threads that work on a 316 shaft. So after trying quite a few options, none of which worked, I finally figured out that it was M5. And the thing is I would never expect this on a boat of this age. Metric? But yes, it's an M5 thread. So it was an easy job to make a nut for it and thread it M5, because I do have a box of metric taps. In this clip I'm double checking that the engine is accurately positioned over the mounting holes in the hull. The engine was originally held in place with some countersunk screws. You can see one of them on the bench. I automatically assumed that the four countersunk wood screws were this length for a reason, and I didn't want to go any longer in case when I tightened up longer screws they came out of the bottom of the hull. In the workshop I have a tin full of these really nice domed head brass screws, so I just shortened these. I nipped off the end of them, then ground them back to a point on the bench grinder, and they fitted perfectly. You will notice that before screwing the engine back into the hull, I fitted the eccentric that drives the water pump. I'm really not sure what to do with this, it was originally disconnected, but for the moment I'm connecting it up to the engine's crankshaft. Time to test the engine. I just connected some compressed air to it and flicked the flywheel over top dead centre and off it went. You will notice that I've also connected a piece of silicon rubber tubing to the exhaust pipe because I didn't want the hull to get contaminated with oil from the exhaust. And instead it's currently contaminating the left hand side of my shirt. The engine runs surprisingly well in the boat and it's running quite fast now as you can see everything's a blur. Nothing's dropped off and the alignment's good. The engine seems to make a very good noise. And as this is an African Queen type boat, it doesn't want to be silent. You need to hear a little bit of a rattle, just for that authentic African Queen flavour. In this clip, I'm having a look at the propeller spinning. The tone of the engine tells me that there is no excessive friction, and the propeller gives quite a good blast of air, which is always a good sign. Once the boat is in the water, of course, the propeller will automatically go much slower, and the engine will work harder. Near the end of this series, I will float this model boat in a bath that I have in the garden, because it's very, very buoyant and I will need to add considerable ballast. I think I'm going to pipe up this water pump to the boiler, 
just for old time's sake. Most of the time the bypass valve will be open, but at least it could potentially be used. This clip shows the fitting of the burner to the mounting plate in the bottom of the boat. Please note that I'm using plenty of Loctite 542 to seal the thread because I do not want any gas leaks through the bottom of the burner. And once the nut is tightened, I'm just using a damp cloth to make sure there is no residue of anything inside the burner body. And now I can fit the piece of ceramic. If you look carefully at the ceramic, although it is bleaching the camera out a little bit because it's very white, you will notice that I've sealed round the edges, so it's quite a neat replaceable unit. With the engine and boiler, including the water pump, all in position, I can now pipe them together. I have to fit a displacement lubricator and a regulator, and not forgetting the exhaust condenser. I need to make a special condenser for this boat, and also the boat's going to need a lot of ballast, particularly at the front. I'm temporarily fitting the stern superstructure, so I can have a look and see how much room is inside the boat. Not much. But the good news is, the rudder is very free moving. That's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.